Thank you. Hello, and thanks for joining today for our April webinar. Uh, as you can see, it's called Managing New Client Relationships with Bullhorn Leads and Opportunities. I'm Lana Archibald, and today we're going to take a look at how we can leverage the use of these leads and opportunities as a way to gain more business. And today, more than ever, staffing agencies need to make sure that there really is good documentation. We need to be able to keep track of any new leads and opportunities as a way to best manage our business. Here's what we're going to cover today. First, we'll look at what the difference is between a lead and an opportunity. We'll also look at how to manage leads and opportunities in our pipeline through favorite lists. And we'll also use cards within our dashboard as a way to easily track our progress. First, we need to understand what is the difference between a lead and opportunity. In Bullhorn, a lead is someone that you're not currently doing business with. They're a potential client. It might be someone that you met at a networking event or a colleague passed their information on to you. It could also be someone that is new to a company that you already do business with. As you engage with the lead and qualify them, the hope is that it's going to result in an opportunity. We also know that the downturn in staffing needs across many of the industries that we do business with, it means that the, con the conversion rates of leads and opportunities might be a little bit less. So with that in mind, recruiters should be more aware of possible leads and then also know how to add them into Bullhorn. This can be a, a way to maintain the, the conversion of leads to candidates or contacts and opportunities ultimately to the jobs. So speaking of opportunities, an opportunity is just that, it's like a job, except that you don't have the job secured yet for your recruiters to work on. Think of an opportunity as a sales tool. Adding the opportunity into Bullhorn is going to allow you to forecast or, or track it in your pipeline so that you'll be ready once you confirm that that job or project has come to fruition. You'll be all ready to go. I know this question comes up a lot, so I want to clarify, if you do have a job and it's a confirmed need right now, that would just be added as a job. There's no reason that you would need to add it as an opportunity first. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move into Bullhorn. Bear with me as I make a quick change on my screen. <clears throat> I'm in Bullhorn right now, and I want to start by looking at a lead record. I'm gonna go ahead and use my find at the top, and I have a lead named Luke Bullhorn. Oh, where did he go? Well, I'll pull up a different one that I know it's in here. There we go, Jamie McAllister. We'll look at Jamie. This is what a lead record looks like in Bullhorn. I'm going to click on the Edit tab because what I want you to see with all of these fields on the record, I'll slowly scroll through. What you can see is that a lead record is designed to capture information about a person. Now, I'm going to click back on the Overview tab. Let me scroll back up to the top. And on this overview tab, I want you to see the workflow. This is the workflow of a lead record. They start as a new lead, and then we move to qualifying that lead uh, with the goal to convert that lead. And then ultimately, once we do that, we can come back and close it. Once you start engaging with these leads, you're going to want to move them to each stage. I noticed that Jamie is already in the qualifying stage. So I may be at the point. Uh, actually, I'm going to find a different one now that I think about this. Let me go into my menu and I'm going to grab a leads list. I want it to be a little bit more clear as I show this to you. Uh, on my leads list, let me do this. 
Uh, I'm going to focus on this leads list for a moment. I'll show you how to move through the workflow just in a second. When you're on a leads list, actually, this is a really efficient way to manage these records. In the list, we can filter it. And I'm going to choose this status column. And I want to focus on all of the leads that are in that new lead status. So let me filter that first. And then I'm also going to go up to the top to the users and just look at my leads. And there's that Luke Bullhorn. I was looking for him earlier. I'm going to venture back to his record. Here's what I wanted to show you, although that past record I was looking at had already been in that qualifying stage. What, what I want to, to stress is that <clears throat> As you start engaging with your leads, you are going to want to move them through these steps of the workflow. <clears throat> As I reach out to Luke and I start engaging and qualifying uh, with him, the way that I can move him to that stage of the workflow is simply by clicking that qualifying button. Notice what pops up on my screen. I'll go ahead and click the update button. And now I can see the current status for this lead is qualifying. Now, two things I want to say. These breadcrumbs, these steps of the workflow, you do have the ability to change the labels of those breadcrumbs. So if you're looking at this and, and you prefer to call that stage something other than qualifying, you absolutely can do that. I've moved Luke to this stage of the workflow. What's really important is that I document the details. That's where the notes come in. I'm going to click on the actions in the upper right-hand corner. Let me go ahead and click add note. And I'll go ahead and add whatever conversation I had as I was qualifying this particular lead. I'll choose my action. And then a little bit further down where it says schedule next action, I'm also going to schedule a task. Let me go ahead and save that. I'll save my note so now my task comes up. And the important thing is that I always want to add notes and then I can add a task as I want to remind myself to continue to engage and qualify this lead. This is what's going to help me build my history. I'll quickly add a task in that subject line. It pulls through my note action. I can change that if I want. I'll change it to say follow up call in my description. It pulled through my note, which I can leave that or uh, I can remove it or just add additional information. Really, the description is going to remind me what I want to follow up on later. You'll notice I'm the owner, which is good. I'm the one that's going to be following up on this. Scroll down a little bit further to choose that next date and time that I want to connect with this lead. And based on the conversation I had with this lead today, I'm going to follow up again at the end of the month. I'll leave that time as is. And the last piece to this task when I scroll down is I'm going to set it as a reoccurring task. In fact, I can do it interval based or in my example, I'll do it calendar based and I'll say I'll do it the last Friday of every month and then I can go ahead and click save. So that way I'll remember at the end of each month. I'll have a task to follow up with this lead. And then as I engage with that lead, I'll always come up to the actions to add a note. And it may be several conversations, several engagements while I remain here in this qualifying stage. All right, that's what I wanted to show you on the record. Let me toggle back to the leads list. Uh, remember when I was here just a moment or two ago, I quickly filtered this list. I filtered the status to new lead. And then I came up to the top two users because I only was concerned with seeing my leads. And this is something that I want to keep an eye on. I always want to know who are the new leads in my pipeline. 
Now that I filtered the columns the way that I want, I'm going to save it as a favorite. Click on favorites, click the blue button down at the bottom, and then I'll call this my new leads. I'll keep it private just for myself and go ahead and click save. That means anytime I come back into the leads list, I can go directly to the favorites, see my new leads, I can run that list and it's dynamic so it will always update to show me in real time who are my leads in the new lead status. And if I change the, the status of the column, maybe instead I'm looking at those that are in the qualifying stage, I could also save that as another favorite. Save this search, and then I'll call this one my qualifying leads, and then click Save. Anytime I want, I can come into the leads list, go up to the favorites, and find that pipeline that I want to work within. As I'm in this list, I can also click on the binocular, because in this binocular view, it's an easy way for me to read the note history. I've expanded it for Jamie. I can read the note. Actually, there's been one note. It was added uh, just about a month ago, back on March 15th. I can move through my list very quickly. I can click on the next binocular to see that next lead and read those notes. Let me go ahead and close that uh, binocular view. Another action I can take is to select multiple records, maybe all of them in my list. In that upper right-hand corner, I've got that blue button that tells me I've got all five selected. When I click on it, from that drop down, I can see the actions that I want to take. So my goal is that I want to gain an opportunity for business from these leads. And I want to be able to convert these leads into a contact. Now, to be able to add an opportunity into Bullhorn, you must be able to reference it to a contact record. Let's quickly go back to our lead record of Luke Bullhorn. You'll see that next stage in the workflow. That's the convert button. I have it right here, or uh, there's also the convert button in the upper right-hand corner. If I want to convert this lead to a contact, once I've confirmed that there is a business opportunity with them, all I would need to do is click on it. Now, I'm not really going to convert the record today, but I did want to point you in that direction so you'd know the button to push. And you know what's really great is that any notes that I've been adding to this lead record, once I convert them to a contact, all of those notes are automatically going to carry over to the notes on that contact record. So you won't lose any of that history. Let's switch gears a little bit. Let's talk about how we manage opportunities. When you're adding an opportunity into Bullhorn, as I just said, they have to be referenced or they have to be associated with a contact record, just like a job. So this is the reason why I need to be able to convert that lead to a contact before I'm able to even add that opportunity. Since we're not adding a new opportunity today, let's find one that I've been working on. I'll go ahead and click on that find button in the upper uh, left corner of my screen. And let me put in an ID number that I already know for this software developer. As I'm on this opportunity record, let's take a look at the workflow or the pipeline. Uh, it looks like for this opportunity, I'm at the negotiating stage. And watch what happens when I hover over it. When you hover over one of the completed stages, you're going to be able to see your win probability. You're also able to see the number of days it's been in this status. You're also able to see both the weighted and the total values. And if you're wondering how did that information get there, it's all driven by the deal value field. And I'll show you where that is. 
on this record, I'm going to click on the Edit tab. And just a few fields down, you'll see there is a deal value. So when I think about what is that amount, what is the number in the deal value, that's what I believe is going to be the potential revenue once this opportunity comes to fruition. And so whatever number you put in that deal value, let's go back to the overview tab, that's what determines the information we see when we're hovering over any steps of this pipeline. I'm hovering over qualifying now. You're able to see that weighted value, the total value, see when I move it to negotiating, that weighted value, that total value, it increases. So just as we spoke about when we were looking at the lead, you'll want to see the history associated with each stage of the pipeline and adding notes, are a critical piece to the success of creating these opportunities. Let's go back into our menu, and this time let's go to our opportunities list. What I want to make sure I'm doing is regularly checking in with my contacts that have opportunities. That's what's going to allow me to stay in front of my client, learn more about the opportunity, also share my findings with my recruiters so then they can be proactive in identifying possible candidates once that opportunity converts to a job. Now, as a business development rep, there's a couple of lists that are very helpful to me and I want to share those with you. I'm going to filter this opportunity list a couple of different ways. I'm going to start with the status and I want to see all of those opportunities that are open. And I'm just focused on mine, so I'll go up to the users and select my opportunities. There they are. And then one more thing I'm going to do, remember how we were just talking about that deal value? That's a column in my view. So I'm going to take the deal value column and I'm going to sort it descending. And that's what's going to show me the most profitable opportunities at the top of my list. This is going to be very helpful to me when I'm forecasting or maybe I'm a manager and I'm forecasting for my team. And you know what I wanna do with this list? I'm going to save it as a favorite. I'll click on favorites, select save this search, and then I'll name it my open opportunities. Now, this can be, I'm gonna show you another one. Let me actually clear out my filters. We'll uh, filter a little bit differently. Here we go. The other type of list I wanna be able to see is uh, I'm gonna go back to choose users, make sure I'm looking at my opportunities. And then this time I'm going to look at the status and I want to see those that are closed and won. And of course, I would do the same. I won't actually save it as a favorite, but I can come back in here and save it as a favorite. This list, this is helpful for me. Maybe I'm meeting with my manager and I want to be able to show them what I've done or maybe even where I'm going. Now, we're going to look at one more thing. We're going to go back into our menu. And this time, let's go to my dashboard. There's cards in the dashboard, which are going to be an easy way for me to track all of the activity for both my leads and opportunities. Let's start by adding a lead card. I'll click on the blue button in the upper right hand corner. Scroll down a little bit so I can see all of those lead cards. And I'm going to choose this one, leads by age. Now I'm going to expand it and make it a little bit bigger. Let's configure this card. I'm going to look at my leads and I'm going to focus on my leads that have been added this year. And I'll look at the status of new lead. Before I apply it, I'm going to change the name of the card. And I think what I'll call this are my new leads 2020. Let's go ahead and click apply. There we are. So when I'm 
looking at this card, I can see I have uh, a few of them. Looks like I have one that has been in that new lead uh, for the past 16 to 30 days, another one 31 to 45 days by clicking on that hyperlink, that number that will actually show me who that lead is. And I want to make sure that I am advancing the leads through the stages of the pipeline. As I'm looking at this card, it's really going to help me to stay focused on these leads. I want, I do want to make sure I'm moving them through the stages from new lead to qualifying. You know, I don't want them to become stale leads. I notice I've got a couple of them that are within that 61 to 90 days. I definitely would want to look at that and uh, make some decisions. Now, just like those favorite lists that we've saved, the same thing applies with these cards in the dashboard. You can slightly change the configuration of a card. I can go back into the blue button at the top. I can add the same card again, click on the configuration. Maybe I'm choosing my leads, so focused on this year, but maybe of a different status. So you can organize these cards however you want. Let's look at another card. <clears throat> I'm gonna click on the blue button at the top. We'll focus on an opportunity right now. And I'm going to look at opportunities requiring action. Now, my card already has some data in it. I'll quickly look at the configuration option so you can see what your choices are if you wanted to look at your own opportunities, the date that they were added. <clears throat> you have options if you wanted to pull those of a particular source or from a company. Here's what this card shows me. It shows me a list of opportunities that are still open after their expected close date or they've been inactive. And inactive means it's a record that has not been edited for at least 30 days. So as I'm looking at this, I do happen to have this one, and I'm not configuring it because I do just only have this one, but I can see what the opportunity is. I can see how many days it's been inactive. And if I look right below, you see where my cursor is right from this card. I'd be able to add a note or add a task or even an appointment or send an email quickly to the contact for that opportunity. So this is helpful to me. This is helpful for me to be able to monitor what I'm doing, what my team is doing, to ensure that opportunities are continuing to move through that pipeline. And these two cards that I've shown you right now, these are just two examples. As we saw when we clicked on that blue Add Card button, you have lots of cards to choose from, both in the leads and within the opportunities. So between monitoring the cards in your dashboard, running those favorite leads and opportunities lists, that's what's going to allow us to easily be able to keep track of these things and to be proactive in the actions that we take, moving through those pipelines and resulting in more revenue being generated. All right, that's what I've got for you now. Sarah, I think there might be some questions. Yep, we've got a couple. Um, our first is, at my company, a lead is meant as a lead for business, not a person. How would I use the lead record in Bullhorn this way? That's a great question and uh, quite common. So as we were looking at in Bullhorn, a lead record is designed to capture information about a person. Instead, what you would do is you would use the opportunity record to add that information. Our next question is, if I use leads and opportunities, does that mean that now every contact and every job has to be added as a lead and opportunity first? No, not at all. I'll, I'll still add okay. contacts when there's an opportunity or an actual job. But the only time I'm going to add them as a lead first 
is if I don't have confirmed business with them, and quite frankly, it's still at the early stages of qualifying them to even determine if there will be an opportunity for business. And, and the same goes for jobs. I'll add a job if there's a confirmed need, but if there's not, then I may add it as an opportunity first. Thanks, Lana. Next question is, when we were looking at the opportunity record, you showed us where we can see the win probability percentage. Can I change those percentages? In fact, I'm pulling that back up. So we've got that visual. You were looking at this. And the answer is yes, your Bullhorn administrator can change those percentages. In fact, uh, I know as a follow up to today's webinar, you're all going to receive links to different articles. And in fact, one of those links is called Opportunity, Probability, and Workflows, and it'll give you the instructions of how to do just that. Thanks, Lana. Next question is, what happens to the notes that I add to a lead once I convert them to a contact or candidate? Mm -hmm. So great news. You're not going to lose any of those notes. Any notes that you add to a lead are automatically going to carry over to that contact record or to that candidate record. I say candidate cautiously since I know we weren't really speaking about candidates today, but the fact is a lead can be converted to a contact or we might discover that we're converting them to a candidate instead. But the bottom line is those notes will carry over to those new records. You will not lose any of that history. 